All right, hey everybody, this is um, gonna be the last homework from unit one, topic one, SLT three through six. Um, so this is the homework from page 21 and it's all about parallel lines. Um, and I'll tell you straight away, I guess, that it's not very important for the quiz. Um, on the quiz we are not, definitely not, asking you to construct any parallel lines. Um, you should know this anyway, because maybe in the future we'll care about it a little more. Um, but it's not super important. You gotta do the homework though. So if nothing else, you should watch it for that reason. So looking here, it says um, we're gonna construct a line parallel to a given line through a point that's not on the line. So there's many methods for doing that. And this is the method I like. Um, I like to sort of picture a point on the line I like to imagine the point sort of being behind it. So to me, this point is sort of more to the right than it is to the left. So I'd pick a point, you know, if I go straight up to the line, I'd be here, but I wanna go this way, giving myself more room to construct over there. But once I've picked that point, I'm gonna center on that point that I've chosen. I'm gonna open up to point M itself. And then what I'm gonna do now is swing three arcs that all use this same compass setting. So I'll swing my first arc. That slices off a point on the line. So I'm gonna go center on that point now. And I wanna swing an arc over here that'll be off to the left of point M. So I wanna make it big enough so that I can now center on point M and swing another arc that should intersect that arc. And that's it. That's the whole construction. So what am I doing now? Um, I made a point right here. I was given a point right here called M and I can now just connect those with a line. We'll do a nice bright red line. So I'll connect the dot that I found through the dot that they gave me. And that line hopefully should look parallel to you. I can slide it over a bit. Let me actually drag it to the line. So it doesn't look perfectly parallel, does it? And that's okay. That's just because my construction was a little bit imprecise but it's close enough that I would certainly give you credit, okay? Um, so that's one method. It's my opinion that's the easiest method. We'll put arrows on the ends. They didn't, or they did tell me to call it line T, so you better in cursive call it line T, lowercase t. Um, but that's it. Um, I'm gonna go to the next question, and maybe we'll try a different method this time. Um, so this one just says do it again, you know, make another one. Um, and so one way to make parallel lines, which might seem a little weird, is you make two perpendicular lines. So I'm gonna center on point P, and I'm gonna use that construction from the last homework assignment where we open our compass just a little bit beyond the line and swing an arc that hits the line twice. And then I can center on those points of intersection, and I'm essentially doing my perpendicular bisector again. I'm already three quarters of the way so this is fine. I'll swing an arc down. I'll go to the other point of intersection and I'll swing an arc down. And those two guys will intersect. And I'll draw myself a line. Now I'm trying to ultimately get a line that's parallel. But the first thing I'll do is make this line here, which is perpendicular. And I'll slide this thing up a bit. You have to slide it up. You need room on both sides of P. Because what we're going to do now is do another perpendicular line through P, but this time we'll be perpendicular to the blue line. Because maybe you can see, maybe you can picture this, that if a line is perpendicular to the blue line, then it's going to end up being parallel to the black line. So this time the point is on the line, so we'll use a slightly different method where we center on P, and we open up, and then we can swing one arc that goes below P. I wanted that to be green. Why aren't you green? Green. So we'll swing an arc below P, and then another arc up above P. And that slices off a line segment that we can do the perpendicular bisector of. So I think I want it to be more like that. That's good. So now center on these points of intersection. Open your compass about three quarters of the way. Swing an arc over here to the left. Then go to the other point of intersection and do it again. You should find that those arcs cross. And again, that's all we need is those two points of intersection. We can use, um, I'm gonna go with bright green. We can use point P itself 
and then draw a line that passes through the point that we created. And maybe you can tell that that green line, we, ooh, whoopsies, that green line right here, I can drag it down and show you. It's pretty parallel to that line we had, right? So this is a different method. Um, we're using our perpendicular line construction. We're using the one where we construct um, a line that's perpendicular through a point that's not on the line. So this, that's what you see me doing in red. Then we do another perpendicular. This time we're perpendicular to the blue through a point that is on the line. And then we end up with the green line, which is parallel to the black line. And this line's supposed to be called K. Oh no, they gave me K. So maybe this line doesn't have a name. Maybe the last one wasn't supposed to be called T either. Probably wasn't, right? No, this one was T. So the line we constructed has no name. Whatever. Um, but there it is. There's your line. I don't like that arrow. I'm going to redo that arrow. But that's a different construction we can use. I still think the first construction for sure was way easier. You can tell it was way easier. We just picked a point, swung an arc, swung an arc, swung an arc. We never even changed our compass setting, right? Much easier. But this method's kind of cool too. Is there a three? Yep. It says construct a line parallel to line S that goes through point R. So I'll show you a third method. And for this one, you still kind of pick a point that's sort of behind point R. I would pick a point probably right here. But really what you're after is a line. You're going to draw a line that sort of passes through point R at an angle to the other line. And then the plan for this construction is we just created an angle. By drawing that line we created this angle here. And we're going to duplicate that angle. So if you guys want practice with that construction for duplicating an angle, this is a good opportunity. So to duplicate an angle, remember, we centered on the vertex of the angle that we're duplicating. And so in red, I'll swing an arc. Then once we swing that arc, we want to transfer that arc up to point R, like so. Then we wanted to set our distance to the, set our compass to the distance between these two points of intersection. Now I got lucky. My compass wouldn't normally be just the right size. Normally you have to readjust. So I'm readjusting to make sure I have those, that, is, that distance perfectly. Then I slide up, not to point R, but to the point of intersection right here. And I swing an arc. And that's going to allow me to make a copy of this angle. So now in bright blue, I'll draw a line from point R out through that point of intersection that I found. And these lines should be parallel. This construction tends to be not super precise, but that's pretty good. Mine looks pretty much perfect. Hopefully yours looks perfect too. Um, but there you go. That blue line is parallel to the black line. That's three different methods for constructing parallel lines. Again, I absolutely think that the first method is the best. Um, but here's three different methods. Anything else? That's it. That's the end of that homework. Um, so practice, practice, practice all of your constructions. Remember, you're going to be expected to um, copy an angle, copy a line segment, do a perpendicular bisector, do an angle bisector, and you're going to be expected to do, well, not, per, not parallel lines. I'm telling you, you don't have to. But um, you'll have to remember the properties of angle bisectors and the properties of perpendicular bisectors. And what I mean by that is if you had an angle and you had the angle bisector, then you're supposed to remember that any point on the angle bisector is equidistant from the walls of the angle. So these two distances are the same, right? On the other hand, if you had a line segment and you had the perpendicular bisector of that line segment. Then you would have to remember that any point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So that basically means if this distance here is eight inches, then this distance is eight inches. And even if I had a point down here, then you could still measure these distances and they would be the same too. Now it wouldn't be eight inches anymore, but the distance from this point to the red 
might be like six inches. And from this point to the red would be six inches. So any point you choose is equidistant from the ends. And on an angle bisector, any point you choose is equidistant from the sides of the angle. But hopefully that helps. Um, I am going to try to find like a decent review sheet that I can post for you guys to try. Um, and that'll be optional. Um, I'll post it. You can print out a blank copy of it and do it. Um, and then I'll try to make a video that'll walk you through that too. Okay. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know if you thought it was helpful. See ya.